There it is right there. Good evening, everybody. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus. Will be all right? All right. Yes. All right, let's do it. says the things of this earth will grow strange to them. We get so caught up in all the everyday rigors that we're going, especially now. People are still so fearful. You know, I can't, I can't believe we'll talk a little bit about it. I, I'm having such a hard time understanding how the, our government officials could just disband and go home. When there are so many people hurting, so many people in need, well, we're going to take a break. It just amazes me. Where's the concern? I know people right now are saying, well, wait, it's, it's a little hard right now to turn my eyes upon Jesus. I'm kind of worried about how I'm going to pay the rent, how I'm going to buy food for the family and all the other needs. I know one thing God always and will always make a way for us to know Christ as Savior. What a privilege to know him and to be able to turn our eyes upon him. The amazing thing is he responds to us. He doesn't just leave us stranded. He doesn't go on a vacation and says, well, I'm going to take a little sabbatical here. But he's there all the time saying, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Let's do that course one more time, would you? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. Let's soon do another 
this song in a minute. Brother Jim Henning, would you ask the Lord's blessing upon our meeting here tonight, please? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, love, and mercy. Thank you for your power. Yes. Thank you for your presence. You're not just the God out there, but you're the God who's here. These are spiritual things. Tune in to your spirit and your ministry in our lives. Help us tonight to do that as we go through this service. Pour out of your spirit upon us. Anoint your ministering servants, I pray. May there be accomplished here tonight what pleases you. Yes. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. It matters to him about you. We can sing that song every Sunday night and be okay, you know it. It matters to him about you. Your heartaches, your sorrows, your cares. Regardless of what you may do, he loves you. We said this morning, I said, you know, we're there and nobody's sick, but we didn't anything about it. All this that's going on, God still got his hand on it. He's waiting for us to hear not only from him, we're going to receive it, have ears to hear. He wants to hear from us. We're talking this last week. We have not because we ask not. He's our provider cares about the intricacies of our everyday existence. May be so small to some, some people say, oh, that's a trifle. Let's don't, let's don't even bother the Lord with it. He's, no, no. Call upon him. All those things, if it means something to us, if it's strong enough, it could be a stronghold. But before it even gets that way, it says casting all your care, not some of it, but all your care upon him because he cares for you. There is a name I love to hear. I love to, you know, I never get tired of those old songs. Some people don't like the old songs. I tell you what, there's, they still, you know, we, we, listen, right now, let's just say, we can do some of the older songs, I mean, newer songs, along with the older songs. And, uh, We'll consider doing that as long as it's some not some repetitious thing that hadn't got a message to it. I don't mind doing some more contemporary songs if they got a message. If they don't have a message, why sing them? That's right. You think about the words of these old songs. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I shall know him, I shall know. We could just go on and on. Those are strong words right out of the word of God. They have meaning, not just some kind of fluff. But we can go through some kind of Richard Simmons spiritual geriatric insurance. Right? That's the way I feel about it. If it has a message, let's do it. 
that makes sense, let's do it. If it's something you can sing to, let's do it. Well, Brother Quick, if you'll give us a chord or a key there, we'll sing this song. There is a name, my love. got some people who are up sick, got some people who are hurting tonight, physical problems, and uh, Joanne needs prayer tonight. She has swelling in her feet and gout. She said it's been so painful, she just, well, you know, she just wants to cry with you. So she's getting help from the doctor. You need to talk to the Lord and get help from the great physician. Always fluorine. Sherry, she's fighting gout. Talk to her again this last week. Need to pray for her and the kids, the whole family. And uh, my wife's, that's a distant relative, let's just leave it that way. She turned 100 years old and just recently she fell, I guess yesterday. And they did emergency surgery on her this morning to replace a hip at 100 years old. Oh, shoot. Lord still got her here for some reason. You know, Right now, there's some folks that I, I, I've mentioned in Bible class before. Some of the longest running, long time friends and, uh, of the, my, my ministry, the ministry of Regents. And uh, in fact, Gloria Roberts and I grew up as children. She lived across the street from my aunt and uncle with her family, of course. And uh, Gloria's bed fast right now, has been for a long time. John's taking care of her day and night. Now, if anybody in this room has had to seek after a, and take care of a loved one, you know that is a that is a major job, day and night, taking care of the needs of a loved one. And uh, we had a long conversation this last week with John, and you know, Gloria was asleep and I didn't want to wake her, but those are some of the finest godly people you'll ever want to meet they love the Lord they've been so faithful she's been bed fast I don't know I guess going on about three years now John okay. says I believe God's going to raise her up I said, he said he said something that really struck me he says I don't know what good we are right now being incapacitated I don't know what good we are to the cause and kingdom I said oh John and Gloria I said, your faithfulness to the work of God, not just to what they've done down through the years, many years in the ministry, but to all the other organizations and churches that they've been there for them in many different ways. If we're here and we're breathing, God's got a purpose for us. You and I may not know what it is right now, but I know one thing. I've known down through the years people that were bedfast that were prayer warriors. And 
no one really but God understands and knows what that benefit actually can be fully. We can experience it, we can get a good idea, and we can get the benefit. But God himself, he's the one. He's keeping tabulation. And those people that are bedfast and homebound and they restrict it, and the prayer warrior, what a difference it makes for the cause and kingdom, for the work of the Lord to go forward. Never count it short of what you can do for the Lord when you're doing your best. Think about that song really quick. We don't have the words for it. It's an old, old song. Every work for Jesus will be blessed. But he asks from everyone their best. Our talents may be few, and the deeds they might even be small, but unto him is due our best, our all. That's the important part, our best. Our best. A lot of times people say, well, that's not good enough. It's not perfect enough. Give God your best. That's what he's interested in. Sometimes we try to make it so perfect, then we get into the flesh. Does anybody now have anything they'd like to say to add to this service? I mean, we we ought to have, first of all, a testimony to thank God we're saved. I'm glad to see Brother Henning here tonight after having a memorial for his dear wife. For almost 62 years or 62 years of marriage, he's here tonight. He said, I'm only half here. That, that, that just kind of stuck in my my heart when he said that I, I see you here but in spirit I often thought of those cloud of witnesses and, and uh, I I I kind of I kind of figured you'd be around here pretty quick I know we're praying for you day and night I want to say this that memorial was absolutely People say, how can you say a memorial is beautiful? Well, you should have seen it. That uh, presentation that your son put together, I don't know how a Hollywood production could have done it any better. The sound was there. He had those songs. They were matched up. The, 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 everything was absolutely beautiful in the, that presentation and service. Your wife would have been Wanted to honor her. Well, it certainly was. I told you before I left, and I called you and told you what a beautiful, beautiful home day of celebration. Now, I know somebody else has got a praise report. Don't let this go by. I'm going to sing a song. I'm going to speak to you. But uh, anybody else, don't be shy. A lot of folks say, well, I don't like this camera. If you don't like it, what do you think about me? I just, <laughs> this thing, but you know what? People are hearing this. Even all over the United States, we're getting calls. People that we've been dealing with for years are watching this program. Some people, this is this is what all they can do is because they're they're bound to their home. So anyway, if nobody's got anything to say, yes. I, I have please. something to ask, Jim. Wasn't it gout that you were taking the bromelain for? You mentioned two people that have gout. Is Romelain is good for me. Romelain. Yes. Oh, I didn't know we was going to be getting the <laughs> like that. If you got gout, take gout and pray. Well, I mean, not an, gout. Was that romelain? Not take an, gout. Take romelain and pray. Not gout. It's a pineapple <laughs> enzyme, and there aren't any side effects to it. Uh -huh. You can take it safely. There are so many properties in uh, pineapple, a lot of different fruits and vegetables that, that uh, you know, uh, as soon as I look around my cousin, uh, we got Hatfield blood in us. And uh, those people, they cook stuff on top of the stove. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, her, her grandmother, my grandmother, of course, they're two different grandmas, they're the sisters were Hatfield from that fighting bunch, you know. And uh, of course they love the Lord, that, let me make that clear. All things all change down the way. But they, they, would, they would cook all kinds of stuff on top of the stove. Get you, what do you call that, holistic? Is that what that is? Those vegetables, and, uh, uh, 
Somebody help me, because I thought that's what it was. I don't know. It might be. Well, as much as you know about fruits and vegetables, I thought you'd definitely help me answer that. And I believe that's what it is. There's so many things that God has given us already that work. But uh, I don't know if the drugstore manufacturers would like it quite that well, you know, because we got some cures that can be done pretty cheap. Still. I couldn't believe it. My doctor wanted to put me on a medication. I thought, well, that sounds good because they're advertising on television. Somebody's got to pay for that advertisement. And they wanted me to help. That's what it boils down to. And I couldn't believe it. They wanted $2,910 a month for that. I was going to tell you the name of it, but somebody may not like that. And it's, it's very popular. It's on television right now. After a few minutes, they advertise the stuff, you know. And uh, no wonder they advertise the stuff. $2,910. The amazing thing, let me say this now. My doctor says, well, let's look and see where we can get it from Canada. $50 a month. And if you'd get 90 days, it's like something like 137 for 90 days instead of $2,910 a month. Now, there's something wrong here with what's going on at the drugstore. And I just hope and pray that our president, and I know you may not like him, but I do. But anyway, you need to pray for him anyway, whether you like him or not. I may get, don't send any cards and letters. I, <laughs> I think we're supposed to pray for those that have the rule over it. That's what I read in the Bible. Before I get myself any more jeopardy, anybody else have anything you want to say before I put my foot in my mouth again? Yeah, well, I have a prayer for one of our friends. He had COVID and had a real serious case of it two, three months ago, and he got over that finally. He was in the hospital, but then 10 days ago, his, he just started shutting down. His kidneys and different things, and they don't really know. His gallbladder apparently has some problems but they got to get him back but apparently they put him in rehab and so he's probably going to come home next week but he called not this Saturday but Saturday before our pastor and said he thought he's going to die and he's going to make it there. So he had COVID? He had COVID two or three months ago but I talked to his wife and they said it had nothing to do with the COVID it's just the all new stuff that he's uh, you know fighting so yeah. he thinks he's going to be okay but you know we don't know that for sure but at least he's better than he was days ago for sure. What amazes me is people can get run down by an 18-wheeler on the motorcycle and it's COVID. Yeah. There, there's something wrong with this picture here and uh, I know this thing is bad what we're going through with this uh, this disease we're fighting right now but uh, I think a lot of it's political too. You don't have to write me any letters. And, uh, I know this I believe we can all agree we're in the last of the last of the last days. Hallelujah. And just look at what happened this last week with that signing of that treaty, whatever they want to call it over there in the Mideast. You say, well, they're always fighting. Yeah, I realize. But I know one thing. It's just another sign. We're nearer home than we were yesterday, and I think it's not going to be very long until he splits the eastern sky. And I believe our Heavenly Father is going to say, son, go get your children. I think we're very, very close. I told my daughter the other day, I said, if I don't see the, the rapture, I said, I believe you're going to. And I, I really do. I believe people have been saying that for 2,000 years. But you look where we are right now. Now, I help me out here. I know Brother Henning prayed. Did we pray for all the sick people that fled? Not yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet? Please. Nope. I got so caught up, I thought, well, and I do need help. My wife's home tonight right now. She was just getting up off the couch and pulled a muscle in her back. She's, she's in quite a bit of pain tonight. So let's do this. You know, Brother Quick, you're going to be with us another, what, a week or so? Another week. One more. Let's do this. Let's take advantage of you being here. Our brother, he prays such a good prayer. He does. Yeah, people have remarked about it even this last week on the phone again. Oh, he prays such a good prayer. And I know you heard these requests. And even if you maybe forget some of them, I know that they've been brought up before the Lord. If you pray for these requests, I'd really appreciate that. Father, we're so grateful that you hear us when we pray. Lord, we're your children. You love us. Lord, you heard the request that's been made tonight. Those that are suffering in life, Lord, we know that you 
was a great physician. He bore the stripes of your back. Before I speak to you, I think we're Brother Quick. This morning we uh, were in service, and Brother Quick and I did this song. Until then, I'm not even going to use a microphone. I think you can hear me. It's like the battery just went dead. I'm going to have to change that. <laughs> It says in Matthew 6 chapter, I believe the 24th verse, and I'll just quote part of it. No man can serve two masters. No man, that means masculine, feminine. You know, I keep reminding people, I said it even again, I believe it was last Sunday night. When you see man in the word of God, this is not a chauvinistic book. Man means mankind, masculine, feminine. Always understand that. I, I've had people to come to me and even relatives and say, oh, that book, look, and, and you know, it's nasty to me to have anything negative to say about the Word of God. But no man can serve two masters. I title this message tonight, Unto What Do We Serve and To Whom Do We Serve? Or you could say, or... To whom do we serve? As I said before, for the third time, no man can serve two masters. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking into Romans, and we're staying right here 
in that vicinity to his whole message. And I want to read to you, if you would, Romans 12. Paul speaking to the church at Rome. Now understand what we're talking about here. We are not talking to unsaved people in these passages. We're talking to the church. We're talking to the born-again believers. Now, I want to use this passage tonight for just one or two verses, and then in the very near future, maybe even next week, I want to preach a whole message on this, these two verses. But I want to set this message up first with these two verses. Paul writes in Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and not being conformed to this world, but ye be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity that we have to teach and to preach and to sing your glorious gospel. Lord, may we never take it lightly that you trust us with your word. May we always yield and listen with open eyes and heart and ears to what you would have to say to us and that we betray it to the people in the way that would be proper and sanctioned by your precious Holy Spirit. And Lord, even though we might make some small mistake, you'll correct us and you'll show us what we need to do. We fall short. Sometimes, yes, we do make mistakes when we're preaching. But Lord, you understand it and you've got your hand on us and we thank you for that. We ask your precious anointing at this time. And help me as I preach this difficult passage tonight. I ask it in my name. Amen. Before we turn to the sixth chapter, I want to look at one word. This word has been over and over in my mind, among many other words, but this one in particular tonight, of all the words that are so golden in this passage that we just read, there's, there's so much here. You could preach a message on so many different words in this passage, but one in particular, reasonable, reasonable. All my life growing up, I would hear my parents say, especially my dad, son, you got to be reasonable. you got to be reasonable. The Word of God says, come let us reason. I've said this before. Problems in a marriage, in a relationship with your children, with your friends, and all the other relationships, if people would just come together and reason before the Lord, we could resolve our differences. And even if we could not totally resolve, we could put it aside enough to where we could go ahead in the work of the Lord function together and uh, disagree, agree to disagree. But we creatures of habit, it's just important that we think we've just got to be right and it doesn't matter what it is. And look at what's happening. I've already mentioned it. We've got our political parties that are farther apart right now than they've ever been in the history of this United States. It's nasty. Didn't mean to get back on that tonight, but that's enough said about it. The word reasonable, I, I wanted to say, let, I know what reasonable means, but let's take a look. I, I got my dictionary out again. I do that a lot. In fact, as I'm studying, I've got my Webster's Dictionary right there beside me. I want, to, I want to see exactly what Webster has to say in some of his cohorts. And I begin to look at this. Fitting. Reasonable, it's proper. Appropriate, right thing to do. Rational. 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 Sensible. When we consider what our Lord has done for us, it is just a normal thing in return to do good things in return for Him. And if he, we love Him, He says, keep my commandments. You know, I look in the Bible it's so many times, it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, 
And you know, I, for a long time, I pondered. I thought, how 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 do you when 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 God's in control and owns everything? How, how do you bless the Lord when He owns it all and He's in control? I'll tell you how you bless Him. Thank you, Lord. When you praise Him, He inhabits the praise of His people. When when He already knows what's going on, but when you notify Him, say, Lord. I need you and I'm counting upon you you see he loves to hear that because he's our loving father he wants us to depend on him because that's what he's for casting everything upon him because he lovingly he cares for us you know we sing the songs the love of God and I, I was thinking about this again this week oh the more we love him, the more he shows us his love for us. But we're going to know more about it when we get in his presence. But we do our best to reach out and say, Lord, let me know and show me how much you love me. And he'll continue to show us, but you cannot exhaust his love. I begin to think, I didn't mean to get on that even tonight, but I think about that song, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can never tell goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell if you would keeping this in mind about who and what do we serve I want to read this to you let's in fact let's read it together chapter 6 of Romans verses 12 and 16 12 to 16 If you're there, are we there? Are we there, folks? I see some folks still turning. Because I want I want to get together with this. It's important. This is kind of a teaching preaching message once again, but I don't know another way to do it at this point, except what we're doing right now. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in its lusts. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Look at 16. We're going to read it now, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit more toward the end of this message. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you or ye are whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Let's go back to verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That could be a real shocking verse to some. Because as I said before, Paul is speaking to the child of God. Recently I've dealt with some people who really if not leaning heavy into it, they believe in sinless perfection. Let me say this. Sinless perfection does not exist this side of heaven. Not with mankind. Only with God. And that takes in the triune God that we serve. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no sin. I want to set that straight. This mortality has not yet put on immortality. Until then, we still have a carnal, carnal nature, a sin nature, even though we're born again because we're still human. People need to understand that. But at the same time, it's not a lease or a license to sin. In fact, we're to do everything we can to stay in the Word of God, have a prayer life, be in fellowship, always stay in the word be a part of even hearing the word and preached and taught sung whatever it takes to stay in the things of the lord 
to help us to stay straight. I've heard all kinds of preaching on television. Oh, this won't do it. This won't do it. It's only this. It's only this. I got to tell you one thing. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses sin. But there's another process that takes place. It's called the washing of the water of the word. We've got to stay into this. Every day. I keep preaching on that night after night. I'm not going to. I'm not going to back off. I'm going to continue till the Lord calls us home. This is where it's at. This is the answer for mankind. And it says, sin shall not reign. I thought that was an interesting word because that something's in charge or in control. Something that's got the grip that can designate. And people say, well, how can that happen? I'll tell you what, the more and more we yield to sin, the more and more the grip can get on us, and the easier it is to get into more sin. Sin does beget sin. I don't care what anybody says. We open the door. Listen, let me let me chase this rabbit right here. What you're allowing in your home is opening up the door when it's of the devil to let all the other things come in. Now, that's not popular preaching, but some of you that's listening to me, you know I'm telling you the truth, and you may not like me for telling you this, but hell's box office and things like that got no business in your house. It amazes me what we see on television anymore. You say, oh, yes, that's, just, that's clothesline preaching. Let me tell you something. Those subtle things that happen, Pretty soon they begin just a, a little bit of accepting this, a little bit of accepting that. Pretty soon you know we've slid. At the same time we need to be human. We can be human and still spiritual at the same time. But this book is our guideline for that. You know, I, I want to say this. Whether I get finished with this message tonight, we may finish it again next, the rest of this next week. I was at a ministerial meeting here a while back. And a dear brother loved the Lord. He came up to me and he said, uh, do you think I could have a word with you? Now here's a man I know loves the Lord, spirit-filled man. I mean, he, you, you, you can just see him, you know, that man loves the Lord. And he writes gospel books and he's there in his relationship. And he came to me and he said, I, I wanna talk to you privately. That's the way it started out. He said, I love to play chess, the game, which I don't know nothing about except what I don't know, I know a little bit. And he said, I don't know, maybe I'm playing chess too much. And I thought about that. And then we went to the restaurant and this time he opened it up to other, other members, fellow ministers. He said, I, maybe, maybe I'm being convicted. I'm not sure. And maybe, maybe I'm playing chess too much. And I said, you know what? I said, that's something between you and God. But I said, I know this. A lot of times people, under the rigors of denomination, they want people under their thumb. And even to the point saying, if you listen to anything besides gospel music, it's of the devil. Now I'm looking at my brother Quick right here. He and I like escape radio that plays good, clean, solid instrumentational music. I think I said that right. It's good, it's clean. Some of it's show tunes, some of it's just good song. The other, the other day they, they, I kept hearing on a regular basis, let me call you sweetheart. Now, I'd like to know what's wrong with that. But I thought about this brother, and I said, here's the clincher. There's nothing wrong with you and me playing a clean game. There's nothing wrong with us having a boat, motor, fishing boat, whatever, ski boat. There's nothing wrong having a motor home a nice automobile. There's nothing wrong with having those things in life that if we can afford them. But the minute we start putting that in the place 
of our service to the Lord. We've just established what we're serving. Because most of the time, people say, I just want to, I, I, I've got to go this weekend. We're going to go serve the Lord up in the mountains in our motor home. And we'll just get with God up there. Let me tell you something. If, if you're putting that motor home, if you're putting that boat and motor, if you're putting all that stuff before God, we've already established who you're serving. That has become your new priority. And it can turn into your God. There's a whole... Let me, let me push it a little bit farther. I'm almost there, but some people are so much into themselves that they are so impressed that they become the priority. Think about that one a little bit. Let sin therefore not reign in your body. There's nothing wrong about enjoying life. In fact, let me tell you something. Contrary to some people's uh, de denomination, our Lord wants to give us, he will give us the light of life, his salvation, but he also wants to give us life abundantly. Our Lord likes us to have a good time. He likes us to laugh. He likes us to be joyful. He likes us to come together in unity. He says, when you do that, it's like the oil that ran down Aaron's beard. He wants us to enjoy one another. He wants us to enjoy the creation that he has made for us. You don't think he went to all that trouble We'll say it's not trouble for God. Well, for you, you and I it is to, to make the rivers, the streams, all the beautiful things, the oceans, everything that man can enjoy. He wants us to enjoy it. But remember, Paul also wrote, they were worshiping the creation even more than the creator. And when it comes to that, we've done slipped. Don't let people fool you. These things of rigorous legalism is not of God. Conviction of the Holy Spirit, that is. I hope I can make the difference for people to understand. God wants you and me as born again children of God to have a good time. By the way, he wants us to, he wants us to enjoy our marriages. He wants us to enjoy our children. He wants us to enjoy all of our family. And he really wants us to enjoy the family of God, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Did you know it says we're knitted together in bands and joints of the Holy Spirit? Can we begin to fathom that? Talk about where we live. We're fitted together. We're not divided. Sometimes we act like it. God says, hey, whoa, 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 come on, come on back. Let's get this thing straightened out. Therefore, let sin not reign in your mortal bodies. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Once again, remember when when we were in Sunday school, be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Lord up above is looking down in love. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you saw. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. On and on and on. Those are members. And they become instruments. Instruments. I looked up instrument. I know what an instrument is. Do you know what an instrument is? There's all kinds of instruments. Even a legal check is an instrument. But it says a person or thing made use of in a godly manner, spiritually, a spiritual tool. Now, all the things I mentioned, they can be a tool of the devil, and they are. But when we have the Holy Spirit in us and the Word of God in us, which you can't separate, it makes us want to use those instruments for the cause and kingdom, and so we yield to the things of God and not the opposition. And in the process, we're serving the Lord. 
if we allow those instruments to deviate and we start doing the things of Satan's system, all of a sudden we're serving the devil. And people said, now wait a minute, you can't serve God in the name. You, you, that's exactly the point. We're talking about born again people that are not walking with the Lord or that they get disgruntled. And by the way, we all have been guilty of stuff. This is not a message to hammer people over the head because we've all been guilty of so much of it. But it's the idea right now, we need to be like a, 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 a warning one sitting on a fence, a watchman saying, beware of these things because if we're not careful, we'll slip because we'll start looking at everything that we don't like instead of looking at what we do like and we'll focus in on that and pretty soon we won't see the blessing in what God's wanting to do for us. God's over here all the time giving us these blessings, these things, and then we've got dissenting over here saying, well, did you see what they did over there? And gnawing away at the things of God. And when this starts to happen, we begin to yield ourselves the other direction, and pretty soon even the child of God doesn't realize it, but they're doing work for the devil. That's exactly what this verse says right here. People say, I don't see that. Take a look at it. He said, well, how can you be born again? Let me tell you something. Our Lord was even wounded in the house of his friends. And some of the worst hurt that you'll ever have in your life won't be from the guy sitting at Mabel's Bar and Grill, drunker than a skunk. It could very well come from a dear, loving friend that slid behind the lines spiritually and can do more hurt ever could be thought of by somebody in a saloon or a bar or other kinds of dens of sin. Are you staying with me on this? Mm -hmm. Understand what I'm saying. Most people say, well, if they're that far, they're unsaved. Didn't say he's unsaved. He's talking to the church. He's talking to the born-again believer. And bottom line is, Satan's job is to cause dissension. His job is for you to look at everything that you don't like and make a mountain out of it to personify it to build it up to where it'll cause division because that's his job right now he's on a terror not only the United States but the world but especially as I look at the United States Satan being the prince and the power of the air but greater is he that's in us our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ but he that's in the world here it is, though. What are we going to yield to? Who are we going to serve? What are we going to serve? Ultimately, the what turns into the who, because it's all about him anyway. It's even when we've done those good things to somebody else. He said, when you've done it the least of these, you've done it unto me. It still goes back to the Lord and Savior that created us and that's also saved us. But who do we yield to? Sometimes the yielding is difficult. Sometimes it's bitter. Sometimes it's hard work because of opposition. But no matter what, if we're going to have victory in our life, if we're going to have a position in the Lord that's pleading to him, we're going to go his way. No matter what the opposition. It could be in your own home. It could be, whether it be your child or children, or it could be your mate. The bottom line is, we need to stay faithful to the things of God. Because if we do, there's victory in it. Because God can change those things. And if he doesn't completely change it, he can even take it out. Or he can make them come around and change. I believe that. I've seen it happen too many times. Don't despair, child of God. Even what we're going through right now. With all of this division and separation. Right now, we're down to less than half of what we usually are. People are afraid. And I know they're praying for us. Many people are watching. And I'm looking forward to the time that we can come back. And I'm looking, you know, it's going to be such a thrill when we can come back together in unity to come together to worship like we're supposed to. To be able to get those song books out or whatever we're going to get out and just, and to be able to shake hands and to, to, to put our arms around each other in a proper way and to, to, to just be in worship again like we're supposed to be. Right now, this is this is at least something that we can do. We're, by the way, we're sanitizing before and after we're taking. 
we got Corel and every kind of stuff you can think about and hand sand. We're doing all this kind of stuff. So everybody relax over that. We're not trying to break the law. But at the same time, I'll be honest with you, we are standing up against it where it's right. Because we're going to go ahead and sing and we're going to teach and preach the gospel no matter what the government likes. That's one thing they're going to they stepping over the line. We're not put up with that. At least I'm not. There's people here I believe will back me up on that. Neither yield your members as instruments to unrighteousness, unto sin. Well, we could just open that and go more and more, but I've explained quite a bit of that already. Uh, yield ourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. You know what that meant? Because before we got saved, we were not sick, but we were dead in trespasses and sin. And he came and made us a new creation in him when we accepted Christ as Savior, when we received him as Lord and Savior. And our instruments are of the righteousness. Do you see who that is? Unto God. One thing we need to remember with all of this, and I cannot bear this in mind enough. Whatever righteousness that you see in a born-again child of God is not theirs. It's the righteousness of God. Because in us there is no good thing in our carnality, our humanity. But the righteousness is of God. Self-righteousness is sin. But our righteousness are filthy rags. I've heard pastors get real graphic about that to the point almost makes you start choking and gagging. Talking about nasty, filthy rags. Trying to equate that to what God would see our righteousness. Self-righteousness is of the devil. And when we get to the point that we think that we have arrived, and I want to be careful with this, because I believe in the gifts, but I have seen some people that are so proud of their gift that pretty soon it becomes their badge. It becomes their ego. Let me tell you, when that happens, that's not of God. God doesn't work that way. And in all things, he might have the preeminence. All power, all glory, all honor. Everything goes back to him. It's not about us. We're still mortal. But thank God we have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb if we know him as Savior. On our way to heaven, waiting for that, that day that we would go see our Lord, see our loved ones that's gone on. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been thinking about that more and more. Yeah, I know I'm 75 years old, but more and more I think about that. When I look back at getting together with the family and how we used to have those great dinners on holidays, we either barbecued or we had tacos and all kinds of pastries and pies and made homemade oil, ice cream, we all got together. Now, at my home, it's four of me and the cat. Thank God for that. But holidays can really hurt. One thing that helps it when I get in the car and drive 300 miles and go see my daughter and grandkids, and my son-in-law is there too, I want to leave him out. I had to smile after that. <laughs> you might be listening. They watch it every now and then. You understand where I'm coming from? Yes. We, you know what, more than ever, we need to fall in love more with the Lord than we ever have and the process one another. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that agape love. It's a commandment. We need to just absolutely do that more than we ever have at any other time of our life. Here we are at this point. You know, the older you get, the more the more things you appreciate. I, I'll tell you one thing I appreciate. It feels good to be able to get out of bed in the morning. Amen. Huh? And I mean, there, there's always... Oh, man. You know, the... 
I didn't say perfect. I said, you know, I'm looking around the room, boy, I got smiles on the face around this room now. <laughs> Just to be able to get out of bed, and I mean, with a reasonable amount, at least you can function. You may say, oh, I gotta stand beside this, <laughs> I gotta stand beside this bed for a minute or four. But at least you, you wait a while, you know, is the coffee ready? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'll be in in a minute. <laughs> or, or you could bring it. <laughs> While we're trying you know, to motivate. But thank God at least we can get up after a while. And we can move. You know, Paul said far better than I ever could. He said, in Jesus Christ, he says, I live and I move and I have my being. My very existence is in Christ Do you, do you and I have a, a grip on that? Can we, can we just really reach into our innermost being and, and, and to our mind and say, Lord, show me a little more of that. And you know he will. It's like in this word, I've been telling people in the Bible class, it's better, but it's... The illustration, it's like mining for gold. You just keep chipping away. You know, sometimes you might be chipping and say, well, you know, I don't know if I've seen this yet. But pretty soon you keep chipping and all of a sudden there's a glimmer. Say, Wait a minute, that, I'm on the right track there. There's, there's, a little, there's a little spark. Oh, okay, that's gold. You just keep on digging and digging and pretty soon you find a bigger a bigger hunk until, or you just keep going and find that, that main artery. And you know, sometimes you find the mother load. <coughs> keep on tapping away spiritually. Because that's the way the Holy Spirit works with the Word of God. He, he, he leads us into all spiritual truths. And you know, this last week, once again, I was, I was studying some things. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. I mean, I got a decent ability with this passage, but Lord, what? What are you really saying here? Sometimes I gotta read it about 10 times, you know? And sometimes I'll just have to stand up behind my desk and say, Lord, I'm having a problem here. I don't know if it's Satan trying to keep me from doing this and understand it, but I, I need your help. Show me what's going on here. Wait a little bit, and pretty soon, it's almost like the Holy Spirit saying, come on back. I want to show you something. This is something you didn't see. Now I'm going to open it up to you. And I guarantee you, it'll work. It'll work. People say, well, I don't understand the Bible. Listen, you seek the Lord with your whole heart. He'll reveal it to you. He'll show you. He'll, they'll, he'll make a way that you'll get the message. And the message is what we need. We need to know that message so we know how to yield our members to serve him. Because there's some people that have convinced themselves that what they're doing, the born again child of God, what they're doing is of God. And it's not of God, but they've convinced themselves that it is. I'm hearing people I've had to deal with a long time, even in ministry, and they're still convinced that they did the right thing and doing the right thing. And I guarantee you one thing, the fruit of what's going on is saying contrary to what they're saying. You'll always know if something's right, if it's coming to a solid fruition before the Lord. There's, there's the aspect right there. Because if it's coming to fruition, if there's, and it may even take time, but you can tell if it's working and if it's right before the Lord. For sin shall not have dominion, verse 14, over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Thank God for that. I heard a preacher here a while back say, oh, they had it a whole lot harder under the law. Are you kidding? I thought, do you even have a Bible you're listening to, reading? Or who are you listening to? Let me tell you one thing. Jesus paid it all 2,000 years ago. We're not under near the rigors of the law. And by the way, let me say something. There's still God's law, but we're living under grace. Still his mercy and his grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. And here's the clincher. 
Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? We ask ourselves now, who is that Lord? His servants ye are, whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. <coughs> and there is the answer. I ask you today, as it says in the Bible, in the Old Testament, choose you this day who you're going to serve. I believe even in the family of God right now, with every strain and stress that we're under, of all the rigors of everyday living where we are, once again, we in the family of God, we born again, bought by the blood, people that love the Lord, Lord, make adjustments in us. Help us to not only redefine where we are right now through your precious word and the leading of your Holy Spirit, but let us recommit ourselves, especially at this time, as we put on the whole armor of God to lead us into all spiritual truths, not just part of it, but help us to get as close as we can to you in these final days, whether it be of us individually that are older or in the final days of which we are living right now before the return, or I should say the, the rapture of the church. The question is, are we all ready? I ask this as I've traveled around the country and even out of the United States and we've given invitations. How do we stand with God? You could ask just about anybody who claims to be a Christian. Oh, I want to serve the Lord. Yeah, but people want to serve the Lord as long as it's convenient as long as it's not going to be something that they have to sacrifice or something that maybe they may have to do something that they didn't want to do. I mean, I'm talking about where are we right now? Are we willing for the Holy Spirit to make changes in us, correction of God's word? Are we willing to go on where we are right now? Because I know one thing, there's been a slip, as it says in Hebrews, We've slipped. The church, for the most part, is nowhere close to where it used to be, even 30 years ago. We've slipped. We've become complacent. People can say what they want. Once again, God is trying to speak to us. He's speaking to everybody, but he's really speaking to his children. And he's saying, it's time time at time to once again choose you this day and for me and for you who are we going to serve have we slipped to the point of breathing on backsliding have we become complacent and say well that's good enough let's settle for spiritual fast food when we can have a banquet before the Lord first question is do you know that you know if you were to leave this life where you'll spend eternity you're going to spend it somewhere as the old timer said there's a heaven to gain and a hun, uh, uh, hell to shun have you made a decision where you want to go well, if I was to say that, oh, I want to go to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Certainly, we believe in heaven. Oh, I want to go to heaven. Well, there's a requirement. We talk about it every week. We're going to talk about it all during the week and again next week and until he calls us home. There's only one way to make it to heaven through Jesus Christ. There's not a bunch of ways. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Only one way to the Father, only one way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. For he paid the price 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross of Calvary. Shed his blood, third day rose again for your justification and for mine. What you need to do, and I, 
I did it years ago, and these people in this room joined years ago themselves in the family. It's when we said, Lord, I'm in need of a Savior. <coughs> I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross, shed your blood. I ask you to forgive me of sin, my sin. I know that's what your blood will do for me. It will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. It will cleanse me from sin. I receive you as Lord and Savior. If you can do that, you can say, even as Paul wrote, absent in the body, present with the Lord. We can say good night here, but good morning out there. I hope you will consider, first of all, if you haven't given your heart to Christ, just do that. You can do it on your own. And for you that maybe know the Lord and you're not where you're supposed to be, you might say, Lord, I recognize I've slipped. And I want you to put me back in the right place with you. And he'll do that. In no wise, he says, I'll cast you. I won't cast you. If you've done this and you want to get a hold of us, please make contact with us. And if not, we'll be praying for you. Lord bless you and thanks for listening. Have a good evening.